Okay, so I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.03 by my clock. Um, and hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, so this is the Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District budget informational meeting. The vote for the budget will be on May 28th at everybody's town halls, right? Everybody's polling place. Polling place. Yeah. Everybody's polling place. Um, I believe that's all explained on the warning. It is. Here we go. Um, so, John, stop me and correct me if I'm wrong in any of the things I say. However, um, I believe that this is fairly simply each school's budget that has already been passed just all put together as one budget. So we really haven't changed anything. Um, was one addition. With the exception of the addition of 14,000. Point, point 0.2 FTE in Woodbury, $14,000 was added um, to okay. for an interventionist in Woodbury. Point 0.2 FTE was added for Woodbury, an interventionist for Woodbury, which was 14000 roughly dollars. Um, so, does anyone have any questions on the budget that maybe I can answer? or John might be able to answer better than I can. Yes. Yeah, just a quick question. I see the small schools grant is shown. Um, is that a given at this point that we're getting that, or is that? Yes, we've received that. We have been, that is given for next year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, in future years, will we also have a separate budget added together, or will, be, will it be more of a combined budget and we get a uh, bill based on the number of students like they do with it's gonna Hazen? Be, it's going to be just like Hazen. This is a proportion just like Hazen's is now. So this, this Union Elementary budget, you got to think about it just like Hazen's budget. Mm -hmm. So that's how this process will work. But um, being this year, with the uncertainty, we started individual budgets, and we figured just the simplest way would be to just simply combine them and then move forward. For so in the future, it'll be more of a yes. comprehensive, comprehensive approach, yeah. approach yeah. for the system as a whole. So these are all three or all four towns, all three school districts' budgets just stuck on here the way they were proposed and passed? Yes, yes. It's Lakeview, Hardwick, and Woodbury's budgets combined. Okay, and there wasn't any overlap or anything, or you just didn't didn't address those issues? You just There's stuck them together? The services, <coughs> no, because the, the services are based on needs in within the building, mm -hmm. um, so there wasn't any real overlap as far as the services that are being well, there's services are being provided across multiple buildings, um, but there's the FTE portion of those is what how the those are controlled. And so the addition to Woodbury's budget was after that budget was passed, or prior to be vote prior to be prior to it being voted on by Woodbury. If I am correct, it was approved by the board, but not by. The Woodbury uh, electorate at that point in time. Until last week. Until yeah. last week. Uh, but the uh, transitional board met as the uh, budget advisory group. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, the budget advisory group met and uh, it was uh, determined that this point two FTE was really fairly critical to the operation of the school at that point and it's 0.2 percent of the overall budget and so we didn't think it was a, a big uh, ask at that point in order to add it to it and uh, just combine those three budgets. Two had already been approved by electorates, one was approved by a board and pending uh, passage by its electorate. Right. So this is why the elementary budget we voted on last week compared to this one is like $300 different per student. Yeah. Like yes. Yes. Yep. <coughs> okay. So what surprises you about any of this? Because this is the first time I looking at, at so, it's hard for me to read numbers. From, from my perspective, there's nothing that surprises me at this point. But keep in mind that this uh, collective <coughs> board with all four towns has only been uh, assembled for what, two months now? Approximately six weeks? Mm -hmm. 
Somewhere yeah. in that range? Basically. Month, yeah. Month. Not very long. Um, so this board over the first year, I personally envision us finding efficiencies and finding different ways to work through this first school year. Uh, and to understand if there is any potential overlap, as you uh, mentioned a moment ago, or if there's any room to create efficiencies uh, throughout the three uh, campuses within the single district. Uh, but we didn't have enough foresight in the budget development process in order to make those educated decisions at that point. Could I ask an awkward question? Yes. Like, where is everybody? Isn't your board bigger? <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> we have a simple quorum tonight. Yeah. This is the majority of us. It is. It is. I don't know. I had no. Heard. I wondered if you were like a budget presenting committee. No. 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 But I hadn't heard anything from anyone. No. I, I suspect they had some sort of competing obligation. Oh, well, I did. Yes. I don't have a question about the budget, but I do have a question about um, the articles of agreement. Um, originally, we were going to be voting on both on May 28th. So I'm just wondering why there won't be any vote on the Articles of Agreement um, and what's going on with, with those. Just a quick question. Under the current scope of the warning that we're meeting about, are we able to discuss that in detail or should we wait until our Regular 7 o'clock? Regular board time? meeting? That, that would be this my assumption. This is about the budget. Okay. Um, if you're willing to stick around for a little bit, I think we can certainly move into that. Uh, that's a fairly ready question to answer as well. I did just hear from Phoebe. Her car broke down three times. On the way here, so she's not making it. So that's one answer. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay, yeah. I suspect. I mean, it was going off and on where I was, so I wasn't yeah. sure that it was going to be on for this. So, um, yeah. Any additional questions? Budget related? Well, you know, there aren't any additional questions. I mean, I. I don't think you need to have something worn in order to be able to explain how come the vote wasn't scheduled. Well, we're moving into a uh, different meeting immediately following this, uh, which that is very much part of that scope of that meeting. I just want to make sure we're staying within our legal bounds okay, at this so, point. So you'll address that? Yes. 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 Okay, I misunderstood. No, nope, I apologize if I didn't uh, state that clearly. So uh, I wonder, I already asked Joanne this question, but how is everybody supposed to vote on this when they haven't seen it? next week but they have seen they have it seen it they've no. seen it all in their individual towns i have never seen this well it's no been, we've seen our part we haven't seen the whole no, thing really it was presented it's, it's on presented. april 22nd yeah. when the everybody was here this budget was discussed it's been out for months months this budget's been out and at the organizational meeting it was and each there. board had a each responsibility had to take care of that mm -hmm. So it's been so out. We should have asked our, our board members. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. They yeah. have, they, I mean, this budget, the transition board has been working on this for months. Mm -hmm. I know that. And uh, it's been out. And it was here on April 22nd. The whole packet was here because this board had to review it and there were copies available to everybody. Um, Is it available online? Yep. Yeah. It's on yeah. our website. On our website. Yeah. It's uh, under the OS, under this board's. This board's got its own web page. If you click under the website and school districts, they've got their own site and the budget's in there. It's budgets. It's also on the April 22nd agenda and minutes and documents. It's on, um, so it's on there, but it's in multiple places there. And I've asked Taylor to make sure that it goes out onto all the social media components too. So the website would be the OSSU website? And then you can go through to You the get a board. detailed breakdown okay. of it at that point. Yep. Okay. I saw, I tried to find that on the website, and I saw yeah. elementary school, Hayes, um, I, I didn't, anyway, I couldn't find it, so. Yeah. It's, it's again. not as readily visible to lay people as perhaps you think it is. The first that these both say draft, does that mean anything? Does that just mean it's not voted on yet? Yes. Yes. Yep. So if you go to the 
if you go to the OSSU website and you go to o about OSSU, it's under school boards and community. And then under school boards within the OSSU, it says the South Orleans Southwest Union Elementary District Board. And you click on that box and it should be under the board minutes. So that might be... It's a little part. It's a little bit. Yeah, and there's a folder that says budget and well, articles. It's supposed to be moved to the front page. Okay, I didn't look at the front page. It's not on there yet, but it's okay. supposed to be. Okay, I'm just moving it to the front page. Yeah. This is the one I'm looking at. So should I just, people ask, should I just make copies of this and have it available in the town office? That's fine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, is this the way it's going to be in the future? That I mean, even with Hazen, we get something in the mail. No, next year you will get your typical. I think this group voted to have a card sent out where to access the, right. this. The electorate voted to have a some kind of a mailer sent out how to access all the documents for the annual report, mm -hmm. and that's when you'll be sent information on how to access copies of the. Thing. So it'll go back to the normal thing. That's why we can't do it right now is because the annual report cycle isn't part of this. This is a separate budget than the annual report. We couldn't do an annual report for this district because they <laughs> haven't been together yet. So. But the, as far as the postcard thing, <clears throat> at the meeting where we voted on whether or not to do Australian ballots and those things, I think they voted not to do the postcard. It, I'd have to go back to the minutes name. personally <laughs> yeah, myself. I don't, I don't recall. I'd have to go back yeah. to the minutes myself on that one. Just to send out a report instead, like for so about two weeks be. before town meeting. So, Diane, the, the actual budget file that you'll find, because this is not incredibly straightforward, once you get into that OS, OS UED board minutes, it's under April. 2019 and then within April 2019 there is a budget a new union budget folder and that has the only document in that is the FY20 OSUESD budget be happy when we change that name <laughs> yeah it's a mouthful so hopefully that makes it slightly easier to navigate yeah, yeah. Taylor's okay. Been, Taylor's going to be doing that. They're all going to go out. They're all going to be okay. on all the social media sites are going to get a link sent. So people can just click on it. Yeah. The website still mentions uh, the May 20, 28th vote on the article. The website still mentions that? Mm, it, says it, it says canceled. It says it's canceled and then lower down it has the, again, that vote. Okay. That the vote is on the 25th of February. Well, it may be the budget vote. No, it's the article. Oh, it's a lot. It was a lot to change. Yeah. Um. <coughs> it's also a new web platform they're all getting used to. Uh, on the upper right hand corner of the website, you'll see a contact us form. If you notice any additional information that's incorrect, if you could fill that out and kick it into them, I think that would be helpful for them. Many many sets of eyes make light work there. Kind of a general question related specifically to this budget, but maybe John can say, is the state all done with the property tax yield decision <laughs> or not? No. No. <clears throat> Any scuttlebutt on how that's it'll, going? I was told it'll be the last bill that they passed. The last one? The last okay. Which should be this week. <laughs> Should have been last week too. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin might have better insight as to what that might <laughs> be. None. No. It's uh. But, yeah, I was told it would be the last bill that's passed. And uh, what's it? the significance of that 184 number around that? Oh, that's the difference between the. Oh, threshold the and threshold the and current, current amount of draft. money that we're spending per student. people per spending per pupil. Oh, we're 184 dollars under the threshold. Nothing to do with property. No. no. <laughs> and I did find out that uh, we got finalized equalized pupil numbers, 
and your equalized final equalized pupils came in a little higher than what we have here, which will actually decrease the tax rate. So, a little, a little good news. A little, a little good news Definitely. for all the towns, or just Hardwick? All of them. All of them. Because it actually came in. We we got in here at three fifty five. I think it came in at three sixty two something. Nice. Um, in their final, 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 final version. <coughs> Um, I think we're on version 20 or 25, so like that. The revised, revised yes. version. Poor Brad at the AOE, he's, he's been a trooper, but uh, he's told us now that it's locked down. No more changes. That's right. the final number. That's what he keeps saying. I just feel like I don't know enough about budgets to know what to ask. I, I mean, it, it, any question that you would ask your own home about, I mean, it's really what it comes down to. Right, it, it, but I would understand, I would know my numbers there. Just, you know, hopefully whoever put it together knows what they were doing and did it well. Well, so this, this is a collective approach between <coughs> uh, many administrators, many board members, many boards as well through several iterations uh, with opportunity for community feedback at many different stages of it. Um, so I, while there are always there's always room for improvement, always room for additional error checking, um, I, I think it's a fairly comprehensive approach. And do the, this new board of eight have some of you have uh, experience with budgets, making school budgets? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have a mix of veteran and new board members here, so. Yeah, so some they of us some have been through this cycle a few times, yeah. so they understand the process. And It'll, I think it will make much more sense next year when this board, you know, is meeting and creating these budgets, and we'll also have, at this kind of a meeting, we'd be able to give more insight as to how it all comes together. Um, because I think most of us can only speak to our individual. Well, except you were on the transitional board, so. Um, the transitional board thought it was incredibly important to honor the work of the individual, the individual boards, boards right. um, and not to try to make uh, uh, uneducated decisions um, that would override those or potentially override those decisions made at the local level. Yeah. So. Yeah. Especially year one. Yeah. Year one's a learning curve, very much. Would a motion to adjourn be in order for this informational meeting? Is everybody comfortable with that? Any more questions? Okay. So. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's called to order the OSUED board meeting for May 21st. Do you have the information you want to hand out, John? Well, just a second, because we need to put the closed at 6. Now you 621. We can all say we survived our first budget information meeting. meeting is. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if anybody needs the agenda. Uh, so I have the agenda. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can all share. Okay. So I'm sure somebody else might yeah. want it. So it'll be easier to read on yours than Yeah, that's I think that would be <laughs> I was going to, the only thing that's really important, is, not the only thing, but, um, thank you. The, uh, Anybody else want a copy of it? Oh, this is the bus copy. room. I wonder that's what this was. Yeah. That's what that is. <laughs> okay, I was like, is it a weather map? Okay. Is it a, <laughs> I wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, they misspelled Borley's. Oh, okay. Where's that? Where is that? Yeah. And the others present. Okay. Uh, okay. I like my name spelled correctly. So, is the name not spelled correctly? Lorley is R E L E I. Sure. I'm pretty sure. Who? Lorley. Lorley Wheeler. Oh, yeah. I can fix that. Um, I guess I'll ask first if there are any amendments to the agenda from this board. None. Okay. Um, so we're at a, approving the minutes of May 14th. Does anyone have any 
we we're correcting Laura Lee's name. I didn't have any. I don't have anything jumping out of me. No. Nope. no. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes for May 14th? Motion to approve the minutes of May 14th. Second. All those in favor of approving the minutes of May 14th, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, okay, so public comment. There was a question about why we are, correct me if I'm wrong, there was a question about why we are not bringing the articles to, why we yeah, are. I'm just curious to know what, you know, what, um, why and um, if there's, what, what the reasons are for not being able to present them at the May 28th meeting. Okay, so um, at our last board meeting, um, we had members of the public speak. We had um, had some time to talk about and think about and read information about the um, request from Standard about an alternate. That had been at the meeting prior to that, one of the reasons why we had not brought Article 11 to um, a vote. Um, and there was feeling on this board at the original meeting and um, by several public, by members of the public that um, piecing apart the articles and not bringing them as a whole was not the intent of the amendment committee. And so when that happened, the, the way that the, art, that the amendment committee had worked in creating this entire document had been sort of pieced apart, and that wasn't the intent. And so as a board, we decided to, that it would be honoring the amendment committee's work and also honoring what that entire document stood for if we brought the whole document together to, the, to a vote as opposed to in pieces the way that it had been. And so that was why we, we made that, that decision at the last one. And if anybody wants to jump in as to anything different, <laughs> please no, I think do. that's a fair assessment. So, so my understanding is, is that you need to resolve that one particular question and then, and then um, bring the whole of the articles. Of the so, to. yeah, essentially at our last meeting we voted to essentially reverse our decision from the previous meeting and bring the entire package to vote together right. June 25th. 25th. 25th, yeah. So does that mean that we will be voting on the whole of the Articles of Agreement and not separate they're, they're, parts? The way that they will be on the ballot is that because because of the way that they are voted on. Some articles are voted on by each town, some are voted on by the entire electorate. Mm -hmm. So because of that, when you see the articles on the ballot, they will be this article, this article, that article, but as we are bringing all of them to vote at the same time, which is what the intention of the, of the amendment committee was initially. So that was the change, change I guess, um, yeah. So it's not going to be a straight up and down vote no. on the article package as a whole. It's going to be an up and down vote on each or how, or, yeah, each part of that article right. package. Yeah. So do we have time to, to get that out and get it warned and actually vote on it? So it's already been warned as of last week. Uh, we can go today. Uh, the vote's going to be June 25th. It'll be in the um, paper this week. Mm -hmm. In the paper on Wednesday. Yep. And on all the social media. Okay, so it'll be warm this week. Yes. Wednesday. Yes. So March. we officially warned it at our meeting right. last week. So it's going to be in the media uh, this week. Right. And then copies of the actual ballots for people to look at will be available sometime. 20 days before the vote. Okay. Like we had planned originally. <laughs> So will there be every article will be voted on or just the ones that are changed? Just the just every articles. Article. Every article will be voted on. Oh. We That's can't true. change some we of can't, them. We can't. We don't. Up to us. Uh, every article that the committee has put forth right. on the warning right. will be voted on. Right. Only those articles that were allowed to be changed will be voted on. Right. Okay. Right. 
Is there any other public comment? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to move forward to administration reports, which we don't have any, nope. and discussion items, which is the school choice policy, Warren school choice policy. So, um, looks like all we put in here was the procedures. So I don't think the policy was the big issue at the meeting, it was mostly the procedures. There's some procedures, and I think some FAQ. technical corrections, yeah. and the FAQ as well. So are those in the intra-choice documents folder? Yes. Okay. okay. Everything's in that folder. Okay. I think I caught everything. So keep in mind that we are warning it as a discussion today, but we are not actioning it for approval from our board until we today. Okay. Right. It'll be warned for adoption next week. Next week. I also added an application form in that folder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget that we don't sit down. It's okay. <laughs> as long as you've all signed in. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I wonder about the first sentence on slots. I've only got part of it again. But <laughs> This I'm the non-technological person. Okay, Under the procedures. slots will be available or awarded. It's a the guidelines and procedures. Guidelines I'm pulling it up. This is okay, so you this want, let me go back. So you're I'm under your procedures? Yes. Okay, so slots will be awarded, will be awarded as following. Younger siblings of existing school choice particip participants perhaps will be assigned. It says be yeah. assigned. Oh. Another tech correction. We're I'm pretty good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> second page of the F. Yeah. Dot thirty one procedure. Yep, number yep. one. Mm -hmm. Younger siblings of existing school choice participants will be. Okay. Will be. My boss has me pay for it before she puts out. <laughs> and so, um, when you say this only applies to the K through six program. Why do we need to put that this only applies to the K through six program? Well, before we had a statement pre -K. that said pre K, yeah. so okay. we can take it out. Yeah, I, I, just to be, just not be confused. Okay, maybe. It's gone. 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 on the wait list from the prior year. In the event there are more requests than there is remaining space available, a lottery system will be used to select participants to fill open slots. Do we want to explain the lottery system, or is that too much? No, it's I, explained in the FAQ. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't have that piece. I just have this. Okay. Um, <laughs> and this is, and they are awarded as follows. Down in below two on the wait list. If you look at it. In oh, okay. rank. Pardon? This is by rank, right? The first thing that happens is younger siblings go. Then the second thing that happens is wait lists, and yep. then the third. Okay. Yep. Just under um, wait lists, we need a, an L in school there. Oh, yeah. Still yeah. Like, with school. 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 Um, the, and first, the first the line. first bullet point under wait yeah. lists. So, yeah. Okay. Fixed. Yay. I added your little complaint process there. Thank you. Thank you. Complaint and it doesn't say my name, so well, I Well, I didn't know what you wanted. <laughs> didn't know we wanted to call it a grievance process. I, yeah. What would you like to call it? I'm partial to grievance process. I think, yeah, grievance. Yeah. We don't want complaints, we okay. want grievances. Kevin process. Nope, no way not at all. How to contact John Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you really want to avoid it, you can just say, here's my number out west. And yeah. Maybe you're going to be unlisted. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I have you're a probably few, right. I have a few people that already have their, I think it's on speed dial. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Where did you put that? How did you do that? <laughs> and then just up in the, um, I think back up to the wait list, the third bullet point, it just says, when seats become available, students will be assigned from wait list based on the Order the children were selected in the lottery, comma, and the priorities. What are the priorities? What? It's yeah. just a little like yeah, I priorities are back at the top under the school choice oh, okay. program. But wouldn't they be? Wouldn't it? 
space available in the building. Well, it's actually your priority. It goes more into your. Um, Isn't that the the like younger siblings and the, the wait slots, list the wording system? Yeah. Well. So then, wouldn't you want to say? Well, it, your priorities could also be the the slots that are available based on the following criteria, which is under the school choice program. Okay. Yeah, so maybe just saying like, and the criteria described above or something like, you know, yeah. just to make it clear what we're talking about yeah, there, you know, like what those priorities are. And the criteria outlined above, how's that? Yeah, something like that. That sounds good. Yeah. So, um, Luke, how do you feel about the length of placement language? Because I know that was sort of a concern of yours about The length of placement. Length of placement. Well, just sort of the language surrounding it. This is confusing language in my it, mind. It, it is confusing because when you read this, it it almost seems like you don't have a chance to to change once you make your initial change, right? You do. Yeah. You do. It says yeah. apply for it. You do. If you want to return. But, but when you when you read it, maybe you could say instead of they will be considered as part of the next year's interdistrict, but. Maybe you could say request to return to the school in the town of the student's residence. Um, something like can be achieved in, through the same process as. I mean, even if we change that first line to say once a student is placed, it's the intent that they remain in there their there choice of school. Yeah. It's the same seven. thing that we have in the. I think if you look at the FAQ, that language. Yeah, but this says they shall. Okay. I think that's true. I think it, right. the they shall also kind of throws me when I read it. Um, or you could say like, yeah, they shall unless they re. Once I'm, a student is placed, the intent the, is that the student will remain. Yeah. At the. Until or through? Yeah, until. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not through. Will remain at their choice school. Their choice school until grade seven. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. If you want to go up your fourth bullet point on the wait lists, families. No, one more. No. From mid March. Yep. Um, as space says, or as space becomes available. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, whichever way. Okay. You and maybe families will receive. Yeah, will receive notification. <clears throat> I think it's important that we all go uh, back home. Or we can really pick this apart uh, as for uh, uh, typos and such. Mm -hmm. Seeing how warning for adopt or sorry adopting. I think I also think um, in the length of placement, it just might make sense to flip the sentence two and sentence three in order so that it reads: Once a student is placed, the intent is that the student will remain at their choice school until grade seven. Once school choice or once school choice is elected. The school in the, school, in the, in the yeah. student's town of residence becomes a choice school and the school of placement becomes a student's home school. Yeah. Then request to return yep. to the school in the town of, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because then you're kind of, you've better. explained yeah. it and then you're saying this is how you get back, mm -hmm. you know. That makes sense. I don't know, just. Fixed. Thank you. Generally speaking, I mean, I'm fine with the concepts we've spoken about. Yeah, I think other than yeah. fine tuning it. Do you guys want to go through the application together real quick? Mm -hmm. I, I haven't even looked at the application. Well, do you want to? You can do the application, but do you want to check the FAQ again? Yeah, okay. let's do. We'll do the FAQ. I don't that one either. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I don't know what I really changed in here, but. The yeah. Mm -hmm. you so first paragraph, Number 55 is third sentence down, Joanne, yeah. on the FAQ. In accordance with 16 VSA section 821. Also take the 55 out. Yeah. Okay. Unless 55 is a subsection that you're trying to get. I pretty much took this from another <coughs> district, so. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Are we considering 
how is transportation something that will impact the choice of like the decision I'm wondering about that like how will the policies mm. like I'm wondering about transportation because also from what I've understood we've sort of said like well we don't really have any guys. leeway and the proximity the piece issue. those neither of those are addressed in the procedures it's, it's, it's a consideration it's okay gotcha uh, yeah. <coughs> you might we... change your mind in a year and say you want to do something completely different with transportation okay, yeah. okay. But right now, like we, we don't have any wiggle room to discuss transportation, right? We've got a new contract, we've got that. Mm -hmm. So the transportation bus is kind of left. I mean, we can know. change the routes, but we could. Yeah. But we, it's well, it's going to be an unbudgeted expense, right? And we don't have time. Yeah. yeah. Contracts three years for transportation, correct? Two. Two. Oh, it's only two. Oh. When did when that did we end up this year? Thought it was this year. Okay. Yeah. They just. Yeah, just, I think maybe we get some. So it'll be next so school year and the following yes. school year. Two yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. During the yeah. time of your two-year period. God, that time's nicely. And if we get some data in the next coming years and say, you know, if, if people really feel passionate about it, we can look at it. Well, you'll also have some data as to how many families are actually, Who's actually gonna requesting yeah. school choice and. Yeah. And the impact it has. I mean, you know, if you have only 10 families, does it make sense to overhaul the entire transportation system? But if you get 50, 20, you know, 25, 50, yeah. 75 families that are all trying to move between multiple schools, you might want to reconsider some things. But right. it seems like it also, yeah, it gives us time to figure out, like, and who wants to go where, you know, right. is a big question about right how Right now it's going to be hard to predict. We right don't even know how many are actually going to do anything. It's a great so. guess right now. I like the idea of just being able to, I don't know, it's not really the, I don't know that if it's the board's purview, but it was discussed a little bit at the last meeting, but somehow facilitating, um, because this is going to be on parents, facilitating mm -hmm. them being able to organize carpools or mm -hmm. various things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of covers number six here, too. When bus routes are finalized for the school year, they'll be available to parents. Mm -hmm. So. The only thing I would suggest is that we set some <coughs> sort of uh, uh, no later than deadline in on uh, item number eight at this point. Um, it says parents will be notified of school choice application outcome in mid-August. Uh, I think on another, on the timeline document, I think I've got by August 15th or something. Okay, I, that, I mean, I, I'd like to just it's keep fine. that. Mid-August is to me August 15th. Yeah. So do you want to just say that? So you know, I, no later, no than, later than, than August, August 15th. Yeah. It gives a deadline that way if it lands right, on a Friday or a Saturday or school Sunday. School choice application yeah. outcome Adjust. by no later than outcome no later okay you didn't get to finish reading no, that's sorry. Right. <laughs> no, that's not a huge deal. no later than application. august okay do we i'm looking at number three and I, I know you've got these piecemeal, so it's probably why, but I'm just wondering do, where it says through the highest grade offered there, for clarity, do we want to just say through two grade or seven or, or however we phrase it before? Yeah, so the phrasing is... Just so you don't have parents going, what's the highest grade offered at Woodbury, is it? Well, the only... expected so, to attend the school of choice through... Sixth grade. Grade seven or whatever, however we phrase until grade seven. Yeah, we phrase it until grade seven, which may okay, be confusing. It Is it better for us seven. to say through grade six? Well, I, it's I almost six or one and a half. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's true, but we have point. consistency with K through six. We don't ever say seventh grade in any of the, the ah. documents. So I'm wondering if we should just say through sixth grade because parents are expecting sixth grade, not like when they see seventh, they might because yeah. I don't know. Like Where was that yeah. other spot? There yeah. Under length of placement. Spot, yeah. Yeah. Under yeah. length of placement. Yeah. 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 Um, so just maybe change that too. as well to through grade, grade six. Grade. I think that makes sense. I, it kind of throws me a little bit mm -hmm. when I see grade seven. Yeah. Language. I'm like, wait, grade mm -hmm. seven? What, before or after? Mm -hmm. you know, right. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, even though I know it's through grade six. but Just be cognizant that 
be ever put down a path of reconfiguration. That's what my next question was, is we are we keeping and, it? We have are, to go back and update this. Does it the make policy, more? policy, I don't think says But that. it says that this can be reviewed and maybe modified yearly. Yep. This so has to be I done by February 1. Yep. This is a, the procedures will probably have to be tweaked as you get through one year of this mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. so this is just, it's me trying to make sure you got a procedure so you right. can get started. Yeah, right. And then yeah. it should be reviewed to see how well it worked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there'll be new dates because it's set up now so that this is year one and then here's what's going to happen in year two if you look at the timeline. That's what I've tried to outline is get you set to go mm -hmm. and then the, then people need to see if it actually yeah. works. I mean this first year is going to be a bit of a living document. Uh, yeah. We're going to have to figure out everything that that all everything you do. Everything is going to be a living so. document. I think it's okay, so you good with the, the um, like, <laughs> MSQ? Are you good with the FAQ? Uh, I'm good with the <laughs> FAQ at this point. Yes. Okay. Do you yeah. want to look at the timeline? Yeah, sure. I think we should look at the timeline. Let me chat. Back up to that. Notification of school. Okay, Where do parents get the applications? I may have read it and I just didn't. It's coming. Okay. Just looking at the timeline. And we'll, we'll be able to meet the timeline I think with so. how we're moving forward now. The June 8th. So. The June 8th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll get all the stuff out. And then we should change mid August to no later than August 15th. 15. Yeah. Let me see when August 15th. It's a Thursday. That's fine. Okay. It's 10 days before, 11 days before the start of school, which I kind of feel like is um, not a lot of time to know. Not well, a lot of time. You want to move your deadline from August 1st to July something, if you can do that. No, I think, I think where we have it right now for this year, that's fine. And if we need to change it for next year, then, or we are going to change it for next year, right? Because we... Well, it says 220, 2020 and, and beyond. beyond. Yeah. Early February is the notification of the process. So. Okay. Do we have a name so, for what? For Woodbury? It oh. says attention for Laura Lee and oh, Christine. Yeah. Well, so I don't know who Kay Woodward this is. This is very much related to that statement there. Um, I assume it would be relatively easy to create a separate email account to receive any and all of these uh, school choice uh, petitions. Um, might that be a cleaner approach to notify the SU rather than three separate uh, administrative assistants? Oh, yeah, because if somebody loses it and then the parent, yeah. It's mixed well, in with yeah. personal yeah. email. Not personal, but yeah. what's it takes, which takes it, yeah. Right, yeah. then you have to update job. this document. Like, this document yeah. can just right. be so, the yes. same or it's whatever. Absolutely. Be the same. Okay. Even if it's just so, a distribution list where, you know, you hit that distro list and it hits everybody. I mean, there's right. a couple well, of different ways to approach it. have one email that any one of these people can, can access. access. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We can do that. That doesn't yeah. require you to. No. Right. No, I mean, that's that's fairly straightforward. That will take about 20 seconds. Okay. Well, maybe. I don't know about 20 seconds. From the sysadmin perspective. Seconds. It'll take you 20 seconds. Do you seconds. think the parents are going to be as nitpicky? It won't take Dave 20 like seconds. The taxes, it says it has to be dated. It'll take IT however long Or postmarked. Or, <laughs> oh, yeah. Are they going to be that? So then that's a good question. <laughs> On March 15th, if they're postmarked by March 15th, is that okay? I think we need to honor that, yes. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. Just but March 15th is the deadline. Okay. We push those deadlines with all of our stuff by mail. Okay. Grant applications, stuff mm -hmm. like that. As long as it's, as long do you want to put as long as it's postmarked? But yeah. Well, that was my I, question. I, just, I don't know if we want I mean, that I, I don't know. safety net there. I think this is inside baseball at this point. Yes. I, I think yeah. we're yeah. picking it. If it's yeah. got a stamp of March 15th, That's I think fine. it's just making sure that the people looking at it know that you need There's to accept deadline. people. Right. Yeah. If it becomes a problem next year, we can always change it or adjust. Well, I can put you it at the bottom. Little, or just via mail, after via mail, just put in parentheses, postmarked, postmark date, you know, or postmarked by. Yeah, so they don't have to receive it by March 15th. You know, I'm the, I'm, I could see, like, I'm that person that would be like, do I, do, is, does it have to be, th what if I mail it on the 13th so and it doesn't get there till the 15th? Julianne, like, under like, April 15th. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. yep. I, so I would read it very literally as well. Okay. Well, Under April 15th, yeah. just the school, the last, exactly. second to last word is there, but it's not spelled. It's T-H. Oh, it's missing an E? Yeah. E-I? E-I, yeah. What, what? And with April, I didn't see it. so, 
there. The second round of applications. You this don't is, have to do that if you don't want to, but No, I just I'm just trying to understand like so you can either apply by March fifteenth or you can apply by August first. Yeah. The issue so it's basically if you the early bird gets the worm mm -hmm. type thing. So uh -huh. You, you put your, you're putting stuff out in February. This uh, really kind of aligns like the public high school choice, so mm -hmm. it's a good practice for them to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because in February is when the public, when you get into high school, this is when public choice comes out, the application process, and it's due by March. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so this is a good thing to get in, them into practice if you get into that. Um, but this is also, you might have, you know, families that have moved in and they're not sure or whatever, or they're not sure if they were staying, and now this is an opportunity for anybody before school starts. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, just to get a little wordsmithy here again, um, the approval is not guaranteed and will be based on availability isn't completely accurate because it's not just availability, it's also the uh, other criteria. Um, so, based on is that how policies. And based on policies. And where, are you, where are you? Excuse me. Timeline intra district uh, choice uh, second to let me make sure I'm reading accurately. Uh, second to last uh, paragraph as all bold or uh, all capitalized. Approval is not guaranteed and will be based upon or based on availability. Second to last sentence, essentially, of the entire document. At the top or bottom? Bottom. Oh. Like, where are you? Okay. Approval is not this guaranteed and will be based on. Defined criteria, I or some, I, I, don't, I don't have a good um, way to describe it. Define our own criteria outlined in, in policy. Policies. Yeah, I like that. Yep, much better. Criteria, criteria, criteria outlined in the policy. Outlined, I'd say, in the procedures. In the procedures, yeah. Because that's where they are. Okay. Anything else? Not above two? Huh? Is that not above two? Yep. And also for that August 1st, um, it's just another chance to just copy, paste that. Oh, sorry. Um, the process outlined in the procedures with respect to the goals and siblings. Yeah, so it's a bit redundant in that same document, isn't it? Hang on, I had to fix something else. That's fine. All right, where are you now? March 15th, bottom of page one, beginning yep. of page two. Yep. Um, so currently it says, upon receipt of the application, the administration along with the superintendent will review the number of applicants and apply the process outlined in the procedures with respect to goals and siblings. Um, so the sentence we just corrected is a bit redundant. Uh, maybe we just need to simply say approval is not guaranteed. Yeah. As you've already stated everything else north of that sentence. Which is kind of what I said. Right. <laughs> What you say, yeah. You can just say approval is not guaranteed. If yeah, that's yeah, all you yeah. want. That makes sense. All right, I'm going to delete it and go back to theory. Is well, we had like six people here? Yeah. We have in the budget. All right. Oh, we have the, so yeah. clean the one up on top. Too. Yeah. But I mean, generally speaking, uh, aside from you know any okay. editor typos and grammatical errors, um, uh, again, I think this is largely complete at this point. Ten. Okay, the, so you've done the timeline, the procedures, meeting, the policy meeting changed, so I guess you're on to the application. Oh, I get my, yeah. Sorry, one more quick thing before you close out. Uh, it's okay. On the timeline, just to, cop, just to copy that little postmark thing mm -hmm. uh, that we added in parentheses to the second round as well. There's another, August, the second page says August 1st, and um, fine thing um, all for you know deadline for second round of applications blah 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 all forms are yeah you got it <laughs> um postmarked by august 1st i guess right my apologies i thought this was a seven o'clock meeting everything that i sent out said seven it's not the uh yeah the, agenda the budget did. review was six o'clock and then we ended that early and, and they those. started early that's why but everything that was sent to us said seven <laughs> just saying depending okay. which column you read <laughs> um uh the, well the warning for the budget informational when we did it said six o'clock the first okay all right uh, uh postmark by august one 
just tell us okay. the okay. siblings. All right, are we all set on this? Yep. All right, we're on to the application. To so my first yeah, question, I'm, I'm not looking on with Catherine anymore because she jumps around. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, it's okay. I'm, it's I'm okay. checking dates. Yeah, sorry. Um, Somewhere in there it said which parent they live with or which a guardian do, or both. Do we want to yep. start so, fairly systematic from the top? Yeah. Parent guardian. Oh, uh, student lives with parent I'm guardian. I'm just wondering if that both. affects the choice piece. Does that affect the choice piece? Yeah. Is my question. That's it. Because that's, well, just because why are we at, like, well, we, it's a registration process, so we have to know who the parent is that they're living with. Mm -hmm. okay. Because some of it, too, may have to do with if they're not with both parents, one parent could live in Morseville and one parent could live in this district. And so you kind of need to know that. Okay. Whether If they're both in the district, well, and here's the other thing. I got parent A that lives in one of these three, four towns, but parent B lives in Crassbury or Wolka. Mm. So is the child residing with that parent? And so there are legal ramifications for this because if a parent, a child usually can attend either district that the parent, one of the parents resides in gotcha. under the law. So I have to know, then you have to dig a little deeper is who's custodial parent. Then you mm -hmm. have to, there, there are a lot of things. So you have to kind of know where this, where's the student living? Gotcha. Are they okay. living with one parent versus the other parent? Okay. And then we have to look at residency. Yep. And there's games played with this all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I know. In the, I know. There are in the games very, played with this around your choice policies. Yep. For with the application policy. form, you have the first thing, the first line of the due date. Yep. Since the first due date is March 15th, like, how do we want to no, deal with this? This round is for August. This 1. round is for August. Okay. So, so next, the next year, they'll have to change the due date. In the next two lines down from that, Lake. Lakeview Union School, if you can lowercase the C in that one. Oh. That word, super little oh. tiny thing. No. What? Oh, it's the it just yeah. it I know, I know. You just I see that. start looking at oh, things. Like, oh, right. Who reads these things? Yeah, and then down in the by mail, too, um, we're missing the attention. Attention, uh, Christy, Crystal. Crystal. Because I wasn't sure where we were. Well, going we're with. changing the completed. Yeah, we're going to change. Oh, well, no, mail won't change. Uh, okay, so mail you, won't change. Mail's not changing. Email's Email will changing. change. Yeah, I'll okay. fix that. I probably started working on this and then got distracted with other things. <laughs> and we your question. Your question do we want it to say attention school choice? instead of attention these people's names just and then of course the, they're going to know that they're getting it anyway but again if there should be turnover you don't have to we don't have to change this document to update the person's name i guess it doesn't really matter it'll go to the new person there but yeah it's the mail once they know once email. they know well when this is in place these people may be there anyway so right okay um next round you'll you'll know whether they're coming back right true I think I get a need to lower the C in circle. Yep. Um, I'm curious if we can add either additional space between the K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mm -hmm. or if we can do check boxes instead. I'm just thinking about folks who I might have shaky hands. About six, you think? Yeah. 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 Oh, and sixth grade. Well, uh, oh, right. Yeah, they were like, yeah. There is that. Can't that be that that's that's then we're gonna have the, all the parents. <laughs> what? My kid's going into sixth grade. What do I do? Um, so I, I'm just worried about the shaky hand which happens frequently on these uh, handwritten forms, um, just in case there's any room for error accidentally circling one and two or two and three, if we just could just add space. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can do that. Or check boxes instead, one or the other. Maybe a list came. Or how about, well, I hate it when I, you should just sit at the table with well, they call it a laptop. Feel free. <laughs> it's called the laptop. It's the duct tape form. I'm pretty proficient at this there you go. Mm -hmm. That works. Yeah, I like that. That works. Oh, yeah. I left it up there. It's okay. I wonder if it was a threat. <laughs> Stay in your seat. Stay in your seat. <laughs> and then you can change your description to please That's mark okay. the grade. Yeah. Some sort. Yeah. No. I think I'm 
was last time. Oh, that's interesting. To get some. Please indicate great. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. I'll just. I'll show up. That's the important part. Why are you putting away from the Yeah, I don't know why you're putting Because I was starting to lose the laptop, so I get it. She put some Velcro on the bottom. Put me through the strides, you know. Make sure I get to get every ounce out of me, I was around. Current family. I wonder why I'm leaving. That's good. So just for clarification, you stated a moment ago that the parent guardian information that you're requesting is explicit for the um, residency. residency process. Got it. I'm not going to ask any questions on any of that. Though. I think I might fold that so people know that this is. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. It's almost like another section instead of just the bottom of number two. And is this going to be like with... Um, the preschool, we have to have like proof of residency from these people. They're going to have to do all this if as well. If there's any question, we'll yep. go down that road. Okay. If but it's somebody it was... that's been here and we just need to verify, yep. then we can do that simply. But um, I just, just so you know, now that you have a school cho choice option, we've experienced it in two towns. Mm -hmm. We'll cut the standard go through this mm -hmm. to the point where we've now verification and there's a signed voucher before you can move into that mm -hmm. but there is a tendency when there's an option like this to see yeah the only upside you guys have is there's no tuition dollars moving that's it's right. one district mm -hmm. so it that, doesn't there's no financial impact, the impact for the kids moving right. between the, mm -hmm. the campuses so um moving on to the next part i see is what will your current town of residence for the upcoming what will be your current town right of residents for the upcoming school year. Are we looking for current town? Or are we looking for the res town of residents for the upcoming school year? Oh. <laughs> so just remove current. Remove current. the word current or what will be your town? Upcoming. Right. I'll just remove current. Thank yeah. you. Well, then just you have to wordsmith it though. What will be your town of residence? residence. For oh, the there we go. Yeah. So there right. you go. Yep. What is your school? Please indicate your school of choice for the upcoming school year. What is your? Uh, I'm just thinking readability at that point. Um, All right. Please indicate your school of choice for the upcoming year. Is that what you said? School, yeah. School year, but yeah. Upcoming school, school year. year. Mm -hmm. Good with that. Good to. They started early. Sorry, I thought you were in the library. I was sick. Oh, See, we should have moved. Well, no, but it's uh, I, no. I'm just giving oh. you a hard time. It's okay. I've been recording part of it. Okay, thanks. Sorry. It's okay. Right. It's not your then fault. I'm at the bottom of the form at this point. I don't want to jump ahead if anybody else has something before that. Um, so we have a line that says received by district on this date. I would love to say received by whom? Is it whom or who? Whom? Whom, whom has received this? Yes, so it just initials. So received on this date by, you know, Christine Gifford or whatever, just, you know, a quick CD. Well, or I gotta figure out how to scrunch things to make it on yeah. the. I'm just thinking chain of custody wise, that way in case something mm -hmm. gets well, lost. Well, I can put received on by this district on this you know, day. The lines, and then yeah. I can put One of the signature. You just through yeah. That's good. <laughs> signature yeah, of staff receiving. Yeah. And she can also document. scrunch the. How's that? Mm -hmm. the I'm good with that. Isn't Google wonderful? You can see everything I'm doing. So I do. I like that. Amazing. It's pretty neat. <laughs> Have we got everything? Mm -hmm. huh? Microsoft does it too. They just cost a lot more. Okay, so we did the. Uh, so we've gone through. through the application. Everybody good with that? I've yep. tweaked yep. everything you've got here. Mm -hmm. We went through the FAQ. We've gone through procedures. We've gone through the intra district choice. Probably ought to take a look at the policy one last time. Oops, i got to change the wording of that. Uh, uh, title of the document is K through K. I know, I caught it. Yeah, figured that was the one you're catching. <laughs> figured I would mention it just in case. K to six, there we go. All are right. we looking at guidelines and, po and procedures again? What are we looking at right now? Policy, just your policy. This one. Okay. We didn't make any changes. And then, just... so, uh, the it is... The, K through kindergarten through eight again. It's in the first, the second paragraph, the second line. Mm -hmm. School choice and grades kindergarten through eight. Oh, are you you on page second? Two? No, second. No, she's right. Page. Nope. It didn't get changed. Coming up. Do you have a, a secret? Oh. A secret to this. 
Oh, Wi Fi that's not operating. Everyone else is on it. Oh, I am on. Oh, I said I'm on students. Yeah, I'm, I'm on, on students. students. Oh, students. And there should be just you need to throw a period at the end of the first paragraph. Thank you. I was like, oh, I want to end up in the The town of residents. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, oh. and any and. Let's go down and go back. Um, so just readability again, choice may be limited only where necessary to the legitimate operational and needs of the district and any applicable requirements, et cetera. Only when necessary? Is that a win or a where? I, mean, I, I think it can be either. I think it can be either. It can really be either one. I think it's kind of the language you had in your warning, too. Was it? Yeah, the FAQ article said that it was the language you had in your warning. Okay, yeah, I mean, I don't, just out of curiosity. It could be when or where. You know, I, I, it would grammatic thing okay. for that same sentence. Could we just say choice may be limited only when are necessary to the legitimate operational needs of the district and any applicable legal requirements? Period, and then say limitations may be imposed only in conformity with the criteria set out in Article Three of the Articles of, of Agreements. Yep. Yeah, sure. Just so that we're not doing the comma and 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 and. Guided by the needs of students. Not be reached. Final sentence of that paragraph. Um, are we looking for existing resources? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I just available resources is what I was looking for. So processes for interdistrict choice of school will be guided by the needs of students, space availability, and available resources. It's not necessarily existing if we have a staff member down or what have available something this isn't the other piece of this times us. Yeah, let me get there. That's a good idea. You have two spaces in the next paragraph, first sentence between the words develop and procedures. Usually I think that first bullet point is Mm -hmm. So we're saying you're going to grant requests based on space availability and with the goal of creating balanced class sizes in all schools, right? Mm -hmm. But we're also going to grant requests based on I know we have those other things and needs of students based on, yeah. I mean, we're sibling. It, it's all of those things based on the following. So maybe what would be what would make it read better is maybe if we take out the first line and just put. We, just might, have we that. might be able just to move because going through the rest of the bullets, we might be able just to move things around so they fit better with our procedures. Because we kind of came up with a hierarchy, right? Like siblings. Um, wait list lottery, right? Right, except for the fact that siblings are not siblings don't take precedent over space availability and right. balanced class size, right? This is the thing that's so confusing for me is I feel like there is a hierarchy for siblings. What were the well, three? Siblings, wait so this list. isn't about your right. order. Of no, it's not. This yeah. is wait just list. the things that the superintendent mm. is supposed to write procedures that include these priorities, which okay. we've just gone through. Right. So this is really, it's not a priority thing. It, this is your policy. The top part is what you're really talking about. The second part is we're directing the superintendent to make sure that they write procedures that are consistent with all of these expectations. Right, and it's not any one in particular item that may or may not right. uh, disqualify somebody from receiving choice. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's just these everything are, must be considered. So just um, just to, as a point of learning or understanding for myself, this is basically like the overarching kind of guidelines. Right, the overarching the, policy. Okay. Right, Got this it. is what you're outlining are the criteria that need to be considered, considered when right. designing mm -hmm. procedures and guidance. Gotcha. Same thing, you just did one bullet up. Yeah. So here's another question <laughs> that I have. Yeah. Extra space front yeah. regardless. Yeah. And this is a sticky question to ask, but the oh, no. third bullet point, I know, I just, I know that transportation is not a mandated thing. 
transportation is not necessarily provided. I mean, right? It's how does that work? How do we, do we if by saying that is our policy? Your policy is is that you are going to continue to do what you normally have been doing, mm -hmm. which is providing transportation to stu residing students mm -hmm. to their home school. That's what you're saying in the first half of this. Okay. For those who choose to attend a neighboring town, transportation is not provided by the district unless there's an existing bus route that passes through the child's residence on the way to or from that choice school and there's sufficient space on the bus. Your first priority has to be the residence of the town in which the school is living. Could we say, and I, this might be splitting hairs, so just stop me if it is, but could we say instead of passes the child's residence, could we say that the child can access? Because my no bus has passed my residence, but you still mm. provide, and I think that's probably the case with several children. So maybe unless the existing bus route is accessible to the child, child. on the way to or from the, and, and are we saying? I. I because that would leave room too for like if we did figure out some of this like if we had bus, bus stop, stop thing, things or know. if parents were willing to yeah. drive their kid unless the existing bus route is accessible uh, or to the or um and existing unless the pa unless the child can access the yeah. existing and, and, bus and, and existing bus route. And it, unless the yeah. child can exist can access an existing bus route on the way to or from right mm -hmm. the choice school and there is sufficient space on the bus i mean it sounds like the kids getting themselves there but whatever, yeah. you know i don't know um and then I do just, we want to put anything in about joanne you had mentioned at our last meeting something about uh restricting the amount of time a kid is on a bus yeah like your transportation po uh contract actually stipulates so that would supersede any transportation piece of that. well you can put it in here but your contract basically says that kids shouldn't be on the bus for more than an hour because I didn't know that until you brought it up because I don't read that contract so <laughs> yeah. well Bear will be the first to tell you that he doesn't support kids should be on the bus any longer mm -hmm. than that it's not good for them yeah no I agree um, we can add it if you want that I no child should be on the way. bus longer than an hour no, I, I think I, I but it is in your transportation in contract yeah. I'd be, I'd be curious. I, I think it's probably not something people know. I don't know if that's something they need to know. They try really hard not to make that, uh, and it's hard. Right, I'm sure. Mm, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, sure it was a 45 minute bus ride. Less up. substantive, more clarification. Is this an intra district choice? Or is this a school choice? Because we use the term interchangeably. No, in your articles are intra district, so I, I guess would, we should find that. Yes. Uh, so the last two bullets currently are identified as school choice. Oh, you've also mm -hmm. got intra district school choice. Okay. <laughs> to combine the two, put it all together. <laughs> Maybe just change it to choice. <laughs> you see it that second bullet says intra district. We'll say choice here does not apply to non-resident students. Mm -hmm. See why we needed that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why where the clarification between school choice or intra district choice is uh, popped up for me. Oh well, yeah. Okay, so I'll have to go back and look at everything. So that's two I've got. Uh, that uh, backspace uh, you got to see there in district. No, this is we're on policies, F point. 31 policy interdistrict choice K yeah, through 6. Got it. Now I'm finally in it. Are you in it? Are I'm you now with us? Here we are. Choice, choice. So, right. Any yeah, place I know we're going back I, to. Where this you? is your policy, the one you need to adopt. Interdistrict choice. Procedures but it's I think she said she's going to go through go back and, and go back yeah. and look at everything. All right. Yeah, I think that, actually, I think that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joanne. Uh, we still have the ability to edit this prior to adopting it next week. Should we find any additional corrections? Yep, before okay. you do okay. final adoption. I'm comfortable moving on at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so we've gone through everything. I'll go back and look through all the other documents to make sure that school choice is changed to intra district. Mm -hmm. Yes. And okay. did we, and maybe change it in the. <laughs> I don't know what the warning says, but warn school choice. it says warn school choice policy on so. the agenda. On the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Um, did we had asked for bus 
root information, which is in our file. Or on paper copy. Or on paper copy. And so I, I wanted to, we had sort of asked for this at the last meeting, and I wasn't sure if we wanted to try to have some kind of discussion surrounding that, or if we are sort of, we're glad we have the information and we'll. I thought the task was that it be available so that if a parent asks. Right, is that so this point, <laughs> So this is, I mean, this is better than nothing, right? Yes. Well, it's a start. It's a start, yeah. I mean, it, if anything, we should have some information available to the parent that says, hey, I want to, I want to go from. Hardwick to Lakeview, Lakeview to Hardwick. What's the closest bus stop near This does child? not say know. bus stops, though. This is or just routes. So where, where, route. can they, where can they get on the bus? Right, and I have, route. and, you know, I just got this. Mm -hmm. Just literally got this yes. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Asked Ted to spend time. Mm -hmm. And so there's more work that needs to be oh, yes. done okay. to map this out. Um, and now that he's got Is some <laughs> semblance of where the stops actually are, we can actually try to move and do. We did this a couple years ago, but we need a certain software that can manage this. But it's it actually puts pings, pins on where the actual stops are on the map, so that we know where those stops might be along the way. Some of these routes, they're going to be pretty limited. And the other thing mm -hmm. you have to keep in mind, there's at least, and then those are maps for like all the different stops in all three, all four of the towns. But the thing is, is that you won't need all those because to me, I think the task is more Hardwick, East Hardwick, how do they get out to the other schools? Yeah. Right. They can come to Hardwick. The Lakeview Woodbury connection is going to be pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mostly if you had Hardwick residents, are they on any one of these paths that could get them to Lakeview or Woodbury? Mm -hmm, right. The other issue is that some of them start down here, on you know, at the end of the town here at the bus garage. Some start out here on Route 15, across from that right. company there. Mm -hmm. And some drivers actually take their buses home and start their routes from their homes oh. in the towns. Mm -hmm. So that, in one of those, at least one of them I found, that's what the case is. I think yeah. it's in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the driver the starts from their home base and moves. So that yeah. would not be a viable option for anybody on that route from this end because they're actually starting from their home. Mm. And we do have drivers that do that. The other thing to note from this is that the AM route, for many of them, it's going to be the same on the PM, but for some of them, the PM route is changed. Mm -hmm. So the pink you see is the their changes oh, in the PM uh, route. I that was so like it that either extends it or, or there's something. people aren't getting on the bus on the PM, so the driver is not going down those yep. roads. They're going yeah, around it. This is the PM and then the other the thing to keep in mind, <laughs> some of these out. roads like, are set up so that a bus can't go very far up these roads. Mm -hmm. So there's specific turnaround points so that it can be a safe turnaround. And it may be that the bus can't go up those roads any further than where they are. And we do have some roads. I do know in Woodbury, I can't think of the name of it, but it's as you go into town, it's the first hill that's paved. The bus isn't allowed to go to the top of that hill or even go up that hill. Um, the, ta the state has told them they can't go on certain roads. Uh -huh. So they're not safe because there's no place for these buses to turn safely around. turn around <laughs> <laughs> oh. without some um, issues with blind spots. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a lot of variables when you think about the transportation route that um, Wildcat has to pay attention to. And so their drivers are pretty, pretty tight on where we're going yeah. here. So that gives you a rough outline where all the buses that cover these four towns are going. Some of those roads, as I was looking at them, aren't going to be what you're going to want to deal with. Um, there's not, they're not going to help the Hardwick Center to be able to get to these schools, so you wouldn't even bother with those routes. Other routes that you can see, I, there is some flexibility and viability to do that. Right. Obviously, from my perspective, um, um, transportation is going to be a, an issue of discussion over the next 18 months about around intra-school choice. Uh, I, I think we continue to improve the information we have, uh, make you know clearer maps and get, get that information available. 
Um, once we have that, then as we're approaching the uh, expiration of this contract, we can start having a, a real serious discussion about um, how we potentially alter these routes, if at all. The other thing, too, is that you may want, you know, depending on how many requests there are, Bear is, Bear is pretty easy to call and just mm -hmm. say, hey, I live up this road, do you have a bus going by, where could I catch the bus? Yeah. And he's happy to just answer that question. Yeah. The thing he's going to tell you is if, and you don't have this that I have, because we spent, I didn't want to bog you down with some of this, but here's how his bus goes. So this bus is bus seven, we'll just say. 6.40 a.m. leave home, 6.48 turn left on Hill Road, 6.49 turn left on Hillcrest, 6.51 a family's home, 6.53 pick up this group of kids, 6.54 pick up this group of kids. I mean, he, this driver has it down to the minute mm -hmm. and that's what they're telling the students, mm -hmm. this is when to expect the bus. So if you now, they would have to know if I'm going to make additional stops or I'm going to take longer at a stop, mm -hmm. it bumps this whole timetable. Mm -hmm. And that's what has to be considered too. I have a question. Is that the timetable that people have said is pu the, that list is was published in the Gazette every year before it used to be, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. it's not currently? Uh, I don't think he did it this year. He didn't do it this year, okay. It's my understanding he didn't publish this this year, okay. but I um, I don't know, I didn't pay attention to the Gazette at the beginning of the year. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> but I've been told that either. that's, well, I don't look at the schedule. <laughs> I tell you, when school's getting started, that's not my priority yeah. at the moment. <laughs> so according to others that this schedule has been published as to, I don't know if it goes by the minute, but it's published, this is the route okay. that's mm -hmm. going by. Okay. And he's usually pretty good when I call down and say, about what time might you expect kid to be picked up and he'll say, oh, da, da, da. yeah, okay, this time. Tell the parents this time. So he's pretty, pretty flexible and pretty good about. And parents are. I mean, I as a parent know the bus usually comes at this about time, but it could be a little time. later. It could be a couple seconds early. It's yeah. <coughs> think of a window. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. And it really is contingent on road conditions. It is. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. if they have any breakdowns or anything that goes on, I mean, an accident occurs on the road, he they're stuck. Or one kid's running down the <laughs> you know. Well, they try to wait, but at the point, you got to get Yeah, going. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So there are a lot of variables with transportation, and you know, my recommendation to you would be is you know, let's get started with it, mm -hmm. and then I would just reevaluate, see how many you know intra district choice um, students there are, um, where are they coming from, and then make a decision there as to how much you want to change the transportation. Yes. There may be some flexibility. I think Rose is waiting. I just had a quick, one question I think was just sort of answered was about whether it was published every year, because I, having grown up in Vermont, that's how it was in our small town, was it was published in the local paper every year and you looked for your spot and saw when, when it was going to be that year. And I think that that seemed really handy and that people, if, if we are in this new and um, merged district, people might be looking at that thinking, oh, where, you know, maybe I can get my kid to that spot, or you know, maybe that, that would work for me in the future. Um, so I think that publishing sounds, to me, sounds old fashioned, but also handy. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I was wondering was how do people, do people petition to have a new spot, or do we do we decide that? Does Bear decide that? I missed the Bear last meeting, will, so I didn't know how. So, that there okay. If you want a different route, yeah, the board needs to decide where they want to do the route. But okay. if you're going to change routes, I would certainly suggest that you speak with your superintendent, have them meet with the bus company about what you're proposing, right. and have the bus company come and be able to talk about what are the you know is this viable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the possible ramifications involved in making those changes? You know, um, because you know, he's been doing it for a long time, so he knows what's going to work and what's not going to work, and he'll tell you how much time it's going to, you know, it, will it impact the time? Yeah, how much time a kid's on the bus or not? Do they have drivers to support that? Yeah. And do, the, I mean, does he change, I'm assuming that he would be changing his routes as where children live changes. Mm -hmm. so. They're pretty consistent right now, but okay. there's, um, yeah, and I mean, if you look at those routes and just the directions they're all going. Right. Um, so, 
So do we want to, do we want to, um, as a board, set a date that we want to like look at this again, or do we just want to? I think it's because long, this is a work in progress. Yeah. So I, I mean, more than anything, from the last meeting, I just wanted some kind of information we could give parents if they were mm -hmm. curious about it, whether it's a map or whether we say, "Hey, contact Bear." Right. Try yeah. to figure I out the best way. Contact Bear and see mm -hmm. if there's Which, any whichever okay. way works best. Just something we can say rather than that we don't know. Call yeah. Call Wildcat and just yeah. say, "Well, we have some preliminary." Yeah. Roots right. on what it is, yeah. and Bear will post. You know, I'll speak to him to make and sure that's that the, the roots way, are posted. As long as he's good with getting called, I think that would be yeah. let's have the let's have the yeah. He's let's had have other parents call him. Yeah. Well, I mean, when when Nicholas started kindergarten, that was what I was told to do. Just call Bear and figure out yeah. where you can get him to a bus stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and he gave me the choice of three different places I could drive him. So I was like, okay. Yeah. So he'll tell you yeah. when a parent calls. He'll tell you exactly where. The best place is to, you know, it might be something that's on the way. It might be able to be door-to-door -door pickup or delivery. It may yeah. depend. Just depends on where he is on his route. And then maybe that's something we put out to the three different schools and say, hey, if any parents reach out looking for transportation, have them right. contact Bear and right. go from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I assume, Joanne, that this is just covering general education transportation, right? Mm -hmm. This, we're, we're not talking we're not special, talking special ed. Okay. That's a separate thing. Okay, that's what I assumed, but I wanted to. So, shall we move on to approve tax anticipation notes? Please. Would you like to? Yes. <laughs> Do you need a motion? <laughs> so, no. It's on the agenda. Oh, right. He just, this he just wants a, us to be very enthusiastic yes, about it. I do. Because <laughs> this year is a, a little bit unique um, because your treasurer cannot create a cash flow if you don't have any revenue. transactions or revenue or expenses mm -hmm. to create a cash flow. So we had to take Hardwick, Lakeview, and Woodbury um, cash flows and just kind of push them all together. Uh, yes, standard too, and Greensboro as well. Um, so we've done that, um, and we've actually done it two steps because the bank required us to do the individuals to go out to bid, and then they would combine they combine them internally to give us the quote for the new Union Elementary District um, because there's no. There's nothing for Alberta to sign because their their internal controls require the district treasurer to sign the cash flow, and there's nothing for them to, nothing for Alberta to sign on their behalf. So we had to go out and get all the district treasurers to we did their cash flows with them, get them to sign them all. So they did the individual ones, and then they could combine them. So we have five options um, for a tax anticipation note. Community National Bank offered two options. Um, they did offer an ICS option if we wanted to go there to um, have our operating account at Community National Bank. That would be a 2.8% interest. Um, they also offered a line of credit at 2.5%. Community Bank NA offered a straight line of credit at 3.1%. Union Bank offered two options. They offered a straight line of credit at 2.5%, and they offered an ICS option, uh, which is where Alberta's planning on opening your operating account, uh, for 2.25%. So with that ICS, we'll actually earn more interest than we will have, we'll actually have more interest revenue than we'll have interest expense with that interest rate. With which one? With the Union Bank ICS. ICS. Okay. Yep. Thank so you. the recommendation ICS I'm with yeah. it's an internal cash sweep account. So basically, it keeps what used to have to happen. We had to get letter lines of or letters of credit from the bank because at times your bank account has over 250 over the federally insured amount, amount right. in it. So okay. we had the bank had to insure that amount for us. So they had to go out and get lines of credit, letters of credit to insure that amount. So this ICS allows the bank to insure larger volumes, of larger accounts of money at the same time. Um, and they don't have to go out for that 
letter of credit. Um, it also protects you. Your auditors like it. Uh, it works very conveniently for us. Our operating account sweeps at night, uh, so we don't have an account there that has a lot of money that somebody could hack into and take. Okay. Um, so that's all captured internally at the bank. They hold it in a non-operating account, and then stuff sweeps in, sweeps out daily. And that was 2.2? 2.25%. 2. 2. So the recommendation will be to so with Unibank ICS, mm -hmm. that's where Alberta's planning on opening your operating account. All of these schools had their operating accounts at Unibank um, before the murder, so that's where she's planning on opening the operating account. Okay. If appropriate, so move. Do we need to make a motion to approve that? Okay. And so then on June 20th, you will have the loan doc to sign. Okay. okay. So. Motion to approve. Yeah. Do you want to say the whole thing? Uh, motion to approve going to Union Bank for the ICS option. ICS option. The 2.25%. At 2.25%. Second. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Um, okay, so. We have a uh, doc to sign. We have a doc to sign. June 20th. June 20th. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. That'll be on your June 20th agenda. Okay, so. Didn't know if there was a short version that we had. Our next time. meeting is the 28th. Mm -hmm. yep. Next week in Woodbury. At Woodbury. And things that we currently oh, have on it. Uh, so we're going to action items for <laughs> school choice. Interest in the district. I think so. Yeah. So we have adopt the policy on that. Warn the board of adoption of adopted mandatory policy. I'm just no. adding. I just added that. Okay. So one of the things that occurred to me is that you actually, as since you're going to be an operating district come July 1, you kind of need to have your mandatory policies okay. taken care of. So what I'd like to do is for your next week meeting, warn the policies, but instead of you going through every single policy that you've just already adopted, <laughs> adopted. Instead, I think if we just put warning of board adoption of all adopted mandatory policies and board adopted governance policies from Lakeview Union, Woodbury Elementary School, and Hardwick Elementary, then all they do is they carry forward into your new one. So if we warn it for next week, and then you adopt it on June 20th. Okay. So you'll have the TAN and this to adopt on June 20th. Then, when you start on July 1 as an operational district, you'll have all the go all the appropriate policies in place. Okay, makes sense. You've got your collective bargaining agreements just moved forward. Yep. There's okay. only one little issue I have to we have to figure out what to do with some of your employees as they merge into this new district because two of your schools have not been part of the CBA. So I'm working with the association to figure out. Oh, the collective bargaining yeah. agreement. Which two schools? Lakeview and Woodbury have not been part of the collective bargaining yeah. agreement for support staff. Yeah. Okay. There is one teacher's collective bargaining agreement for the entire SU, but there is a separate support staff one, and those two schools have not been part of that collective bargaining agreement. So it will impact the custodians, food service, and administrative assistance in those schools as they move into this collective bargaining agreement. And so that still has to be resolved. Will it affect them in a positive way or? Uh, it could. Okay. It depends. Each, depends. each individual is a different circumstance. Gotcha. And it, each board has had their own <coughs> practice of how they provide benefits. Although I've moved very closely to aligning it with the collective bargaining agreement over the last couple of years so that it, for me, it was an equity issue mm -hmm. that some were getting certain benefits and others were not. Mm -hmm. So I really worked to try to make sure they were pretty close to the same benefits. Mm -hmm. as, so it might not be as big of a hit. Yeah. Um, probably the impact would be greater on um, the salary grids or the wages grid mm -hmm. for this, which may be positive or we'll have to figure it out. Nobody, nobody should suffer a loss yeah. out of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. They will have already signed their contracts. They have. They have signed. They will have signed their contract, and you're under. You have to honor all of those contracts right. as they move forward. Yeah. 
the issue is, is there may need to be adjustments as you have employees that haven't been part of a collective bargaining agreement. So you have, you would have to reissue a contract that would meet as they get placed mm -hmm. on the grid. Right. And do they choose to be part of that unit, or do, or is that just the ipso facto? Are well, part of this Act 46 was one collective agreement right. for the district, so um, I don't think there's going to be a choice. Okay. In that. So, well, <laughs> okay. well, well, honestly, every person can choose to be part of the association or not. That's an individual person's choice. That's not what we're talking about. The, the, the CBA. group, the CBA, will govern this, the entity. Got it. Okay. Yep. That, that you don't have to join, but you, right. the, gotcha. the agreement governs everything governs that happens. everything that happens within you, the... You don't have to gotcha. join, but once you do join, it's under one CBA. It doesn't matter. It's it one CBA. So there's one collective bargaining collective agreement. Collective bargaining agreement. Collective agreement serves everybody, whether you're joined, whether, whether you're right. personally joined. That's correct. That's, correct. Gotcha. That's what I was... Yes. That yeah. part confused me. Now I understand. It's, yeah. it's really a guiding document of the benefits that the employee receives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the negotiation that you have yeah, between the board and the employees. Mm -hmm. Procedures. Is there anything else that we should have on the, on the just, agenda? Just a question about the warning of the adoption of all adopted mandatory mm -hmm. policies. So basically what we're saying is we're taking all the policies from three, the three different schools mm -hmm. and saying, yep, these are our policies. They're all the same. Now. All the same. No, no change to him. <laughs> they, they Nothing all that's in the conflict with each other. No, they no, all the same. I, I have worked very hard to make sure everybody. It it kind of needs to be the same because mm -hmm. it's an yeah. equity factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all and the mandatory policies are the ones that the state tells you you need to have in place for policies. There's recommended and suggested policies, and some of them are those. The other set of policies is really your policy governance policies, which all of these boards adopted. You guys need to have that discussion, but those are all been adopted by these boards, and they are being moved forward at this point. I mean, part of your one of your policies is the executive limitations that you discussed at the SU board meeting. So, um, you know, I expect that they're going to move for adoption on that in the June meeting. So that will be one of your policies that will go in there. Um, so we've been trying to clean them up, bring them forward, and you'll review them and revisit them as a board as you go along. But these have all been adopted and approved by all the boards, and we're just, you need to just take those and bring them in. But I feel as a board, you should adopt them yourselves. Mm -hmm. So we can then put your name at the bottom of the adoption that says this board has adopted these policies as well. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we just adjourn by right? consensus then? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. All right. At uh, seven thirty. Seven thirty-seven.